All right, I'm going to talk about Google Drawings. Google Drawings is another app from Google, just like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. So you go to drive.google.com, and uh, once you're in Google Drive, you go to um, create a new document, just like you would Google Sheets, and it will create this thing we call a drawing. So let me just go ahead and uh, share my screen with you. And you can see that I'm in Google Drive and you see the new button and everything else. So I'm just going to click new. I'm going to go down to more. I'm going to choose Google Drawings. And now I've crea I'm creating a new Google Drawing here. This is your work area where you can start drawing. So what we can do is just get started by drawing, let's say, a line. So you can choose that right here. And I can draw a line. Now that line will have uh, characteristics or attributes and I can change those by clicking here like the line color I can change it to red I can change the weight so it's a heavier line um, I can change the type of line whether it's a dash line and other things but I've got a line in here now if I want to since I've selected the line tool if I want to draw another line I can just go where I want to and I can drag and I've got another line and it will have the same attributes unless I change them I can change that one to a blue line let's say right so um, I can create other objects in here for example I can create a text box I just drag where I want the text box to be and then it comes up with um, something I can type in so I can say uh, Texas for example I can highlight that just like I would any other text and I can increase the size of that choose the font size and choose other tools right here along with that I can change the font type um, I can change the color or that's the highlight color color I don't, I don't like that I'm gonna undo that um, I can change the text color here so I want to change the text color to uh, let's say maroon got that so I've got that I can change the size of this object by moving it around like this by grabbing a corner but then I can also move it around and uh, I can move it where I want to okay I can change the background on this I come in here the fill color we call it I want to make a gradient fill it's kind of a cool light colored maybe blue background you see how it's gradient in the background or I could do a solid color if I want to a solid um, you know light yellow Let's go back to the gradient. I kind of enjoy the gradient. I don't know why. But so I've got these objects that I've created out here. Like I said, I can move them, change the size of them. If I want to, I can select them. Notice the select tool is automatically selected already. So I can take this by clicking on it and now it's selected. And then you have to make it the, the mouse will change to that. And then once it's changed that, you can move it. You can move it. Notice this red line is behind the others. That's because it was created first. So it's behind uh, both Texas, but it's also behind the blue line, as you can see right here. One of the things we can do is we can arrange things differently by changing the order. So I could bring that one all the way to the front, or I could bring it forward. And the difference between that, if I bring it to the front, it'll be over. Uh, it'll be over all of the other ones. So let me bring it to the front and you'll see. Do you see it's over Texas? Now, if I go back to arrange, I can ch send it backward and that means it would be over, it would be under Texas, but over the, uh, the blue line. Let's send it backwards. And so now if I move to Texas, let me click off and click on Texas. If I move Texas out of the way, you'll see that this red line is behind Texas. Let me do it like this, but over the blue line. So that's how you can arrange these objects forward or behind one another. So those are that's some ways you can create some simple objects. And so um, another thing we can do, of course, is name this. We're going to name it. I'm going to call it um, uh, Plain with Google Drawings. And of course, if I once I've it's it's being saved all the time, but now it's being saved as instead of untitled, it's now called playing with Google Drawings. Let me spell Google. Google would not appreciate that. It's okay. okay. G L E. How's that? So uh, I've got me a drawing here, and you know there's lots of things I can do with this. You know later on we can see that we'll actually be able to pull it into Google Drive, meaning the Google Docs. We can use it for many other purposes, but. 
for now, let's just take a look at a few other features here. I'm, do, I'm trying to do a very brief overview of this. So I can go to the file menu and one of the things I can do is I can do something called page setup. And with page setup, one of the things I can do is I can change the size of the drawing, the size of the canvas that I'm drawing on. So there's some standard sizes here, or you can do your own custom size. So right now it's 10 by 7.5 inches, uh, a 10 by 7.5 inch drawing. I can change this to a different size so I can be a 10 by 10 inch drawing. And when I apply that, do you know that it noticed that it changed, it kind of squished it a little bit, changed uh, uh, to 10 by 10, because that's called the aspect ratio, the height to the width, the ratio of the height of the document to the width of the document. So in this case, they're both square, right? Uh, it's 10 by 10. So you can change that. Notice it does change your drawing a little bit when you do that. So I like to set this first under page setup. Notice also you can do pixels, but you should do this first. I'm gonna change this to pixels. You see how it changed the number to 960 by 960? That's because a 10 by 10 inch uh, picture is the same as 960 by 960 pixels. So change that first, and then if you want to change this, <coughs> let's say to 1500 by 1000 pixels, you can apply that and notice it changed it now in pixels. Whoa, that's terrible. I'm going to undo that. So anyway, that's something you can change and you can set usually uh, before you get started. While we're at it, let me talk about the background here. The background here, I don't know if you can see this well in the video, but it's it's a checkerboard look. And that actually doesn't mean the background color is checkerboard. That means the background color is transparent. So if you're building this, uh, maybe this, this is drawing is going to go on a web page, or maybe it's going to go in an advertisement on a web page. So what that means is the background will be transparent, and the background of this will take on the color of any web page or wherever it ends up being. So if you put this on a black web page, the background color will be black. If you put this on a white back, uh, background, it'll be white. And you got to be careful with that kind of thing, because if you don't know where it's going to end up, if it's just an advertisement that goes on uh, multiple web pages, uh, then the background may not look so good. So you can specify a particular background. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, another thing under tools, under arrange, I want to talk about grouping. So if I can select some objects here, I'm going to, I'm going to show you my extraordinary uh, drawing ability by clicking here. And I'm going to choose the line and I'm going to draw me a stick figure. And then let's see, I'm going to put a shape here. I'm going to choose a, uh, I'm going to choose a head or a circle. So I've got this, this stick figure drawing, and a lot of times I can select the stick figure by clicking on the select uh, button here, and I can choose that. But notice it, it the way I drew uh, the way I selected it, it ended up selecting a lot of other stuff. So if I tried, if I wanted to move this someplace. You see how it's moving that 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 red line at the same time? Let me undo that. So sometimes we want to select the individual parts. So if I wanted to select the head, I click on the head. Now if I wanted to select the arms, I have to I could control click. I don't know if you remember that from before, but we've talked about how you can select things with control and click. I hold down the control key and I click click, and then I'll hold down the control key and click over here, control click, and I, I'll hold down the control again here and I'll click that. And I'll hold down the control key and click here, and I'll hold down control and click here. So now I've selected all of those things, and now I can move those. Remember, it has to change into this little uh, four headed arrow looking thing, and now I'm just moving those selected objects. Well, that's really nice, but what if I select all, if I click off of this? If I click off of this over here, it'll all be unselected. So one thing you might want to do is go up here to arrange and go, go here to group and you can group these objects together so all of these would be thought of as one object. So that's what I just did. I grouped them together. So even if I click off, if I come back and I click on this, you see how they're all selected and if I want to move them, I can move them. It gets a little tricky to select them here because you, if I can still select the head, for example, do you all see that? But the other object, so I can still format these things, change these up if I want to, but the whole thing is still one unit. If I want to ungroup those, I go to Arrange and I choose Ungroup, and now there would no longer be a unit. So if I come back over here and I wanted to move this middle man, if I click on it, notice I have to reselect all of them. So I can select all of them if I'm really good with the selection tool, if I don't have other things around it. See if I can get Let's see if I can get it. I don't get too close to the other objects. Looks like I did it. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to arrange and I'm going to group that again. So that's how you can 
group objects. While I'm here, let me talk about uh, formatting. Some of the there's a, a few cool things you can do with formatting. For example, I can click on this text box and I can go to format and I can go to format options. Uh, those are also available on the on the uh, toolbar here, more format options. Um, so uh, one of the things you can do is you can add, for example, a drop shadow here. These are kind of fun to play around with. And so uh, I can I can change, uh, you know, the distance that the drop shadow is from the object. You notice how it the drop shadow. This is a shadow that drops out of it. Right. And I can change the angle so that it's over to the side. So you see how it looks like uh, a light is shining on Texas on this text box and the shadow is behind it. It's called a drop shadow. I can change the blur radius. You can kind of see what it does. See how it blurs it out. So you can add some pretty cool effects with that. Um, so that's um, drop shadows. You might want to play around with reflections. Reflections are kind of cool too. See how it reflects the object that you're that you're working with. So those are some cool things that you can do with format options too. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just stop it right there, and I'll come back with another lesson a little bit later.